What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the redesigned buttons in iOS 15, button configurations, and all the cool new stuff that they brought to buttons. So if you aren't aware already, Apple actually rebuilt buttons from the ground up. They look similar, but lots of cool new things under the hood that we're going to be able to dig into now. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by destroying the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and want to stick around. Let's get into the video. All right, let's go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. Bear in mind, this is Xcode 13 beta. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS. And let's go ahead and give this project a name of button improvements. And you want to make sure, of course, your language is Swift. We're going to stick with UI kit. So just go ahead and select storyboard for your interface and go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop here. And we're going to start by closing this right panel. We'll go ahead and expand our Xcode window. And on this general uh, screen for your project settings, you want to make sure your minimum iOS target here is 15 so we can work with the new stuff. And then we'll jump into our view controller file and bump up the font size. Before we start actually using the new button stuff, let's go ahead and give this uh, a run in a simulator. Maybe we'll go with the 12 Pro Max and hit this run button up here. So while that loads, whoops, that's not the simulator we want. I think it's this one here. While that loads, uh, let's go ahead and start talking about buttons. So the biggest new addition to buttons is this concept of a configuration. So Apple actually has a wonderful talk about, uh, you know, buttons being rebuilt from the ground up. But instead of going through all that, let's just go ahead and create a function here that's going to be called create button. And let's just start talking about the basics and then we'll get into some of the more fancier things you can do. So creating a button is pretty simple. Nothing uh, has changed in terms of the constructor as before. So I'll go ahead and create a button here. X and Y will be 0, 0. Width will be 200 and the height is going to be 50. Next up, we're going to want to definitely add this as a subview, such as that. And then we'll go ahead and also say that its center is view.center. Now comes the part which is interesting. So prior to this year, we would have to set the button title and the color and all that good stuff on the button itself. Buttons also did not support uh, multi-line text by default. You'd have to customize that. This year, we've got this new thing called a configuration that makes all of that super simple and gives us some new functionality. So I'm going to create another function here, and this is going to be called create config. And basically, it's going to create and return a UI button configuration for us. And this, this is the part that gets interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and say that button dot configuration uh, is going to be equal to create config. Now, how do we create a configuration? So Apple has a bunch of configurations, a four in particular, that they've created by default. So we can actually go ahead and just start by creating one of those. So I'm going to say the config is going to be a UI button configuration, and we're just going to start with the filled configuration and return it here just to get an idea as to what this looks like. So we go ahead and create it and return it. And if you look at that, not only do we see this blue background and this like highlight state, we also have a very subtle corner radius. Let's go ahead and actually set a title on this so we can actually see it a little more better, um, a little better in terms of what, what the result is. And then I'll talk about the benefit of this. So instead of setting the title on the button, we're going to set it on the uh, actual configuration here. So I'm going to go ahead and call this tap me and go ahead and give this a run. And if you ever wondered how Apple's buttons have this very uniform look across the entire uh, OS, anywhere in iOS, this is basically what they're doing. So this this uh, configuration style filled basically gives you a filled look. It gives you a nice corner radius and you can customize it even further. Now, before I go to the others, if we command click into filled, you'll see that there are a few others that they have provided. And one of them is gray right here, which uh, as the name implies, will give you a gray looking uh, button. One is tinted, one is plain. So let's maybe take a look at tinted and then we'll start getting into, uh, you know, how do you create your own versions of these and 
how do you further customize because there are a couple of new things you can do with buttons here like showing spinners and whatnot so here is a version of tinted it's very very subtly tinted uh, i'm not the biggest fan of this i really like filled uh, but to each their own so that's cool and all let's go ahead and start making this more interesting so what else could we do so a configuration now actually also uh, you can supply a tint color, which actually you can do before. Or let's go with actually a background here. I'm looking for a uh, background color actually, which you could do before as well. They just renamed it. So I'm going to make this system green. And we're going to change the title here to uh, subscribe. Or maybe let's go ahead and call this start free trial. And you guys will see where I'm going with this in just a moment. So if we go ahead and give that a run. This is what our button looks like, which is, you know, looking pretty good. Now, what happens if we want to add a subtitle to our button here? So prior, you'd have to customize the title label, but configurations have made our life easy enough where we can now go ahead and simply assign a subtitle. Look at that. Crazy, right? So maybe this subtitle will go ahead and say, you know, the, the title start free trial. And then we'll go ahead and say maybe like $3.99 a month. Uh, after trial ends let's go ahead and give that a run it might be a pretty long subtitle but you guys will hopefully get the points so yeah so there is our subtitle so looks kind of weird because our alignment isn't centered so that brings us to alignment so configurations also have the alignment property on here for the title and I believe that also applies to the uh, subtitle so the alignment is for both of them so we can go ahead and make this centered and before we give this a run, if you guys ever recall how you set a border on a, rather a corner radius on a button, you'd have to go ahead and mess with the layer. But what's really cool is this configuration actually uh, gives you the ability, I keep spelling, uh, typing border out, but it gives you the ability to specify a corner style. So maybe we want this to be medium right out of the box. We can go ahead and do that. And, and you know you can customize it even more so if you would like uh, to but you know the styles let you pick uniform ways to show things in your application so uh, instead of me customizing each of these properties let's go ahead and take a look at some of the definition stuff in here so there's quite a few things uh, one of the first things you'll see here is Apple actually supplies uh, different sizes you can set. So there is mini, small, medium, large, etc. And of course, you can size them um, to your own specific liking, but they've got you covered on that. They've got title alignments. What else do they have in here? They've got corner style, which we just looked at. And other than that, they've got this Mac idiom style, uh, which I have no idea what that is, if I'm being completely honest, but it's there for you. And yeah, they've got many other things in here. So this configuration, um, it lets you uh, basically supply these configurable attributes in one place and assign that whole config to your button. Now, this brings me to uh, two more interesting things, uh, and then we'll talk about uh, creating extensions with these. So the first interesting thing that was added to buttons is there is a new property. Let's see if I can remember it. And it is going to be uh, shows, let's see, what I'm looking for, maybe it's on the configuration actually. So let's go ahead and try on the configuration here. There is a way to show an activity indicator now natively on a button. So if we supply this to true, and I just go ahead, let me just comment out the title and the corner radius and all this stuff. What you'll notice is now on our button, we've got this spinner. So it's a little hard to see. I think you can customize the color of it via the uh, tint color, which I think is actually on the button. Let's see if that changes it. But the cool thing, you know, is the fact that if you ever wanted to create a button where, you know, user taps it, specifically like in-app purchases is a good example. And you want to show the user some like spinning state. Sometimes we used to use, uh, you know, heads up displays pretty commonly in iOS apps. But now that buttons have a spinner directly built into them is pretty nice. So you could reactively, you know, set this Boolean to true or false to meet your needs. But point being, it's now there and available to you. The next thing I'm going to cover here is what happens if you wanted to change the highlighted state. So let's go ahead and make this maybe system pink just to get some different uh, variants going on here. When you go ahead and tap on this, it looks pretty cool. It like dims out the button a little bit in the highlighted state, but nothing really, you know, too custom. But what if you wanted to customize it? 
So there is a update handler on the button itself, I believe. So let's go ahead and try to assign it. So we're gonna go ahead and try to assign the, uh, let's see, there's update configuration. That's not what we want. Let's see where that block is. So there is a configuration update handler, this guy right here. And if we actually look at the description, it's a closure that executes when the button state changes. So a state could be is highlighted, for example. And this actually takes in the button as a parameter uh, to the closure. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, configure the button in here. So we'll go ahead and say if button is highlighted, that's not what we want, is highlighted and let's say you wanted to change the background color to something crazy you can go ahead and do that in here maybe we want to make a yellow uh, so on and so forth so the point is this closure it gives us a really convenient way to go ahead and customize things in a dynamic style right so you don't have to hard code your stuff anymore you could actually you know examine other state in this closure so cool that all being done uh, said and done we've got a, a bunch of new like button things obviously Apple actually has rebuilt buttons from the ground up internally, but the next question that comes to mind for me is writing these configurations is a little verbose. So how do we wanna accommodate you know, making these universal throughout our app? Because generally, an app has a primary button, a secondary button, maybe a tertiary, different styles. And what I would recommend, and what I've actually started to do as I play around with this stuff, is start creating uh, extensions. So I would extend the UI button dot configuration and very similar to how Apple has their, you know, like dot fill or dot plane configuration, we can create our own. So I can go ahead and say static funk. Actually, we just say static and we can go ahead and create this or paste it. And I'm going to go ahead and call this a primary. Uh, and it's going to go ahead and create and return a UI button configuration and basically just pasting that in. Let me actually go ahead and call this function a uh, free trial. That's the configuration that I want. And let's go ahead and just change the color so we look like we made an effort. And now the beauty of this, the simplicity, is not only did you not have to subclass this, but what you can get away with doing now is for the configuration here, all you need to do is go ahead and say this is going to be a start trial button. So let me just go ahead and copy and paste it. Free trial actually is what I called it. And that's it. That's how you get your button to look how you want. You have it available to you throughout the entirety of the app now. So what you could even do is, and what I suggest you guys do is, let's say you have a view model in here. So you can go ahead and create a view model and pass that view model to this configuration to spit out a properly you know, stylized configuration for the button. That might show the spinner, it might change obviously the title and subtitle, uh, more importantly the background color, it'll also go ahead and probably change like fills to perhaps plain, right? So point is make it modular and reusable. So that's really all I've got for you guys today, pretty short and quick video, buttons being rebuilt it might on the surface not look as big of a deal as you know I'm making it out to be, but it is really cool and I encourage all of you to watch Apple's WWDC 2021 uh, video on buttons. There's more stuff that I didn't touch on here for the sake of time, but I tried to cover the things that I think are most relevant to most of y'all. So. That's all I've got for you guys today. Go ahead and hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Super appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS and want to stick around. Still shooting for 50k subs by the end of this year. We're almost at 30, so we'll see how that ends up going and where we get to. But definitely hit that subscribe button to help out along the way. Uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below if you have any questions, video suggestions, want to see something in particular. Lots of more WWDC content to come in the days and weeks ahead. So... Yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.